Divine True Spirit Assistance Discussions, giving assistance to people who have lived on earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. The title of this spirit assistance discussion is Constance and Assistance for Enraged Earthbound Spirits, during which Mary channels Constance, who lived as a slave woman in the Indies over 300 years ago, and many millions of other spirits, who died violently and remain earthbound, continuing to harm others on earth because of their rage at injustice, who are drawn by Jesus into a conversation about forgiveness. The session was recorded on the 6th of March 2018 from 10.50 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. G'day everyone, um, hopefully you recognise me, <laughs> I've had my hair cut, <laughs> but uh, it's Jesus here coming to, to talk to you again, and I'm here with Mary, so g'day darling. Hi darling. We've decided we're going to do some mediumship for you today, and uh, we're unsure about who's coming forward at this stage, uh, some things are getting organised for us, so what we'll do is we'll just play it by ear and see how we go. So Mary will just need a little pause uh, while we're waiting for her to connect to our spirit friends who want to talk through her and hopefully uh, you know, learn something from the session. <laughs> okay, well the first spirit who would like to speak is a man too, who we spoke to some months ago, probably in late 2017, I think it was. Mm. Uh, he's a guide, or he acted as a guide at one point for Sonia, who's come to speak to us a number of times. Mm. And he just says he has some questions for you and is, wants to ask for your help. And it feels like partly he... he He's using this a little bit as an exercise as well to help others, mm. yeah, yeah, to have this discussion publicly. You know, there's mm. probably some things he could ask where he is, but he just feels like it would be interesting to do it this way. Yeah, and there's also some spirits who, um, who are earthbound. He wants to obviously assist through the discussion, so. Yes, he does. Mm. He mm. does. So he wants to speak to you specifically about that, yeah. 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 Hello, old friend. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for speaking with me today. Mm, pleasure. As you may already know, I have some questions about... It's really in my role as guide. Mm, mm. Up until this point, I've been very largely involved in guiding people who are already in the spirit world. Mm. Now I would like to try some experiments in working with those who are still surrounding the earth. Yes. As so a, kind of spirits that we would call here on earth, earth bound or who yes. surround the earth after they've passed. Mm. Yes, yes. And as I mentioned in our previous discussion, I am originally from Africa mm -hmm. when on earth, and there are many of my brothers and sisters from this nation who had a life, they experienced slavery um, and when they were on earth, and they haven't been able to as yet make the transition into a spirit life mm -hmm. and so I would very much like to assist them what I notice is that there are large groups now of people who have been enslaved in one way or another while they were on earth who are still surrounding the earth and are creating what appears to us here to be quite a lot of havoc mm -hmm. on the earth Mm -hmm. Because of what we can see is their unresolved pain and anger and fear. It is as if they still remain as slaves mm -hmm. <laughs> and they are very 
in one way or another, they influence the situation on Earth quite negatively because they haven't yet moved beyond those emotions to a point of forgiveness. Mm. So while there are many of my brothers and sisters from the African nations, there are also others who have been or felt enslaved in one way or another while they were on the earth, but who come from other places, other nations. Mm. So I would like your assistance in making contact with this group. And perhaps you are best able to first make contact with them, or perhaps you can advise me as to how I might make contact with them. Have, have you found them? Have they been able to listen to you at all? No, no, it's it's as if occasionally one amongst the group might sense a glimmer of my presence uh, where I feel their attention is drawn, but then they resume their uh, what I can only call it's it's like a cycle of distress mm. and they're very embroiled in that cycle of distress and when I come to be present with them hoping for the opportunity to have a conversation and to assist them it is very rare that there's an interruption in the cycle mm -hmm. and occasionally someone will glance or sense me but there is, there's never enough break before they resume into this cycle of distress. When you say cycle of distress, can you be more specific about it so that our listeners can understand what you mean? They are full of fear and rage mm -hmm. about what occurred to them on Earth. And now they are very intent upon people on Earth who they feel are victims of a similar situation mm -hmm. or who may become victims of a similar situation or who have in the past been victims of a similar situation. Mm -hmm. And they, it is as if the emotions, this what I call the distress, which is really the fear and anger that cycles through these, these groups all together, mm -hmm are uh, conveyed and um, placed or pushed upon these people on earth who they view to be in a similar or who have been in a similar situation. Mm -hmm. And because of this, what we observe, uh, me and a couple of brothers who wish to assist these people, we observe that the situation on earth becomes almost like a cycle of fear and anger and fear and anger and fear and anger and and this is causing more danger for the people on earth we mm -hmm. feel mm -hmm. and it is causing more conflict mm -hmm. and we very much wish to help not only our brothers and sisters who have passed on but the earth itself mm -hmm. Uh, to break from what i want to call a cycle of distress have i explained that well enough now. Yeah, maybe if I could explain it a bit in terminology that many of our listeners will understand. What's basically happening is that there are many spirits who have had a cycle of violence in their life while they were on Earth, who have now become spirits who have not forgiven the people who did the particular things, you know, the damaging and hateful things to them. And instead, what they're trying to do now is influence the feelings in particular and also the thoughts of people on earth who are potentially in or who are in a similar situation to what they were when they were on earth. And this causes people on earth, some of some of them not even have ever been hurt, <laughs> to believe that so everybody is going to hurt them at some point or somebody is going to hurt them at some point. And so then they take preemptive action generally. And so you end up in this situation where people on earth are being influenced by spirits to take preemptive action and many times violent preemptive action in order to prevent themselves from ever being harmed. Um, yes, and what we notice is that the people in spirit 
have they feel there is no outlet mm-hmm. or they, they feel in this cycle where the emotion feels to them to never be released mm-hmm. there's no release of the tension and fear and anger and rage and desire for vengeance and so they seem to feel that when a person when they can influence a person in the earth plane to have a response of anger or fear or vengeance then they feel something they feel more relieved although we don't call it that <laughs> no well, it's not really relief is it no and it, there's it, no way of being relieved until they enter the state of forgiveness as you correctly point out yes but for for many of these spirits that what they're doing is they're imposing their feelings upon others in the hope that at some point their feelings will lessen but the reality is their feelings will never lessen using this method no it, they will never reduce no and th- this is why there is great concern as you know on the earth at this time there is much division mm-hmm. between race and gender and nations and economics and everything feels divided to many people on earth mm-hmm. but in part we see this other process occurring where people who have been enslaved and felt oppressed in their earth life are now attempting to they call it prevent this happening for others but in reality we see a lot of rage and vengeful feeling being fostered and harbored in mm. the people on earth and we see it is very like a powder keg <laughs> mm. Mm, i'd agree yeah i'd agree with that so brother can you help me mm. Well, I, I feel the very first thing we need to do is get in contact with some of these spirits. Um, and uh, I'm just thinking about the best way to do that. I think I'll just put out a general call to for any spirit who's been oppressed or enslaved. And I, I noticed that there are quite a lot of almost every woman who passed before the 19th century has also been in this state so so there are a large number of women who are also feeling this way yes um, and these groups are men and women mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. we see joined together yeah, yeah and another aspect that concerns us greatly is that when a person on earth who has experienced depression passes very often they are drawn into these groups and they are not beginning this beautiful life of spirit. Yeah, yeah. And they're stuck earthbound, not even understanding really why they're there. Yeah. So this has given me an idea. Perhaps the best would be to try to contact people who have recently passed amongst these groups. Well, I'm not sure about that either, um, because they very, very often have very little influence upon the other groups of spirits who are more, who are more solidly in their anger and resentment Mm. and vengeance. Mm. And so when a person who's recently passed finishes up being, if you like, removed from these groups through through their condition changing frequently the people who have solidified these groups are are not changing and and that's the thing we've really got to change if we change anything at all because then once the group is progressing the whole group is progressing then any new person who enters that group has the potential then to also progress Mm. so it's probably our best course of action so what I'm just doing is organising some things about trying to get quite a lot of our spirit friends to just have a call to a lot of them um, to come here and we can maybe have a chat with them through Mary and, uh, and many of them won't initially understand why we've called them but I'll, I'll explain that to them um, as, we begin, as we begin the discussion 
And then once uh, once we establish some kind of connection, uh, I'll uh, basically explain a few things to them, and and then hopefully they can see you, and then we we can sort of establish some trust and faith in your help uh, amongst them, and then it should be relatively easy to help them after then. Yes, this is having some effect. It seems that many of our celestial friends have been waiting for an opportunity to have a conversation with somebody on Earth mm. because this is quite vital to these. These people are so entrenched in the Earth. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I will withdraw. Yep. And... Um and if, if um, there, there's different spirits coming now, what we want is the is a large group, large groups to come. So we'll try and arrange that for them to come and speak through Mary as a group. And there will be a spokesperson that, or a few spokespeople that have to be organised. So we'll just organise that and uh, and start from there. The key, the key for many of you who are now coming is that um, you're used to influencing people's feelings and emotions quite a lot, but you haven't spent hardly any time talking to people on Earth directly. So um, it's a bit of a different experience. It takes yeah. a little bit of time to get used to. And, uh, and whoever is going to be more efficient at doing that or has ever done that before is probably who we need to select as a person that we can speak to and the rest of the group needs to listen to the discussion um, once the discussion is established that way. Whoa. <laughs> oh. The key for you too is to not sort of impose so much of your emotions upon Mary, who's the medium, because otherwise she'll find it difficult to talk about what, talk to, uh, talk, you know, say what you want her to say. But, and I know that's quite difficult, but if we can do that initially in particular, that will help us get started. Okay. Oh. <clears throat> Yes. Yes. Huh. <sighs> 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 What, what is it? Well, we've asked you to come here to have a chat about the different things that have been happening to you after you've passed and also happened to you while you're on Earth so that we can help you deal with those particular things if you want to. But it, it, there's a much better life available to you if you do deal with these particular things then remain connected to the earth so much and we would like to help you in, and introduce you to some people who want to assist you to be happier and and not be so um, caught up in what's happening on the earth just uh, it's a long time Mm -hmm. since you were on Earth or since yeah. you passed? 
since I spoke. Mm -hmm. I, I did speak in this way before, mm -hmm. but a long time ago. Do you remember when? Not, not long after I died. Yeah. I spoke. <sighs> Do you remember your name when you were on earth? Constance. Yep. And I, I spoke to my daughter. Yep. Oh. And did your daughter hear you? Yes. Yes. I feel full of anger. Mm -hmm. <sighs> so Constance, what we'd like to do is help you sort of with that anger and also help you feel about some things so that we can help you live in a happier place and just living in anger all of your life. If you, and we'd like to help the spirits that are with you. There are a lot of spirits with you. Oh, I can't stop the anger. Oh. Oh, I can't stop the anger. What I'd like you to do is just breathe and attempt to relax enough so that we can have a conversation. <sighs> okay. <sighs> What is it? What is it? What is it you want? What is it? I, I can't s stop the anger. The anger about me. The anger about my daughter. The anger. Mm -hmm. No, I understand that. Um, I'm not asking you to stop it. I'm just asking you to stop affecting the medium with it. So you, you need to let yourself feel what you feel. But projecting what your feelings at the person who's trying to help you discuss things with you is, it makes it difficult for them so if you could I, I, ha, how do you do that yeah yeah the way you do that is you have to feel that it's yours rather than trying to have another person feel it with you does that make sense oh i'll explode no it's just you can do this uh, you can do this it's just uh, it's, it's your anger and you just got to let yourself feel that no. Right? Now understand why you have anger, because you've had plenty of bad things happen. And, uh, and uh, none of it was like, any of it was your fault that it happened to you. So naturally, there's going to be anger there. How are you doing? <sighs> Uh, is that better? Yeah, yeah. Well, can you tell us a bit of details about your life? Oh. Do you remember when you were a little child? Yes. Mm -hmm. Where were you born? What country were you were born in? America. Mm hmm In the Americas, it's somewhere 300 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you were born into slavery. I, yes. Mm. 
I don't know where because I never left. Yeah, yeah, I understand. I never left where I was born. And nobody educated you about where you, where you were or any of those things. You just lived a life that was a life of a slave. Yes. Hmm. Can you... Injustice, injustice, injustice. Yeah, just continual injustice. From the moment I drew breath until the moment I ceased. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Taken so much. My children were taken. Mm -hmm. Every, every dignity. Yeah. Yeah, it's a terrible, terrible thing. Can the, fir the first thing I'd like to do, Constance, is introduce you to some people who have been, who have been wanting to assist you for a long time. Is that okay with you? Uh, who are they? Well, there are people who have passed like you have, and uh, some of them have experienced the same or similar kinds of injustice that you have experienced. What do they want? Only to help you through it, only because they, they, they were helped through it themselves and they, oh. are, they are now much happier. And, uh, I'm frightened. Yeah, I understand that you might be frightened. There's a general rule about things in the spirit world, and that is that any person who is in a brighter condition than yourself is in a happier condition than yourself, and they love, they love, they have more love in them. Does that make sense? And what I'd like to do is introduce you to some of those people who are not going to harm you. They don't just want to help you. And stay back. That's all right. You can just stay and observe. They're not going to push themselves on you because they're not like the people who have harmed you. They're not going to be not going to harm you and they're not going to cause you physical violence or anything like that. They're not going to try and harm you verbally either. They, they just want to help. Make sense? So they, there's no reason to worry too much about them. Okay. Right? I understand that you feel that you can't trust many people or that you feel that you can only trust people who are who have the same level of pain that you have. Yes. But these people no longer have that pain, but they used to have it. Does that make sense? Yes. So, so they know how to get rid of the pain that you have. Oh, there can't be a way. Mm, there is a way. There is a way. Hmm. Yep. The, the way you've been doing it is, is by trying to <laughs> influence people on Earth. And that, that doesn't help you. And as you know, you've been doing this for a long time now. And Protecting. Yeah, trying to protect people, but sometimes... I had no protection. Mm -hmm. I couldn't protect. I couldn't protect mm -hmm. my but, children. And... But you can also see that many of the people you've tried to protect, you couldn't protect either. Isn't that true? Yeah. I've tried. Hmm. And it's lovely that you've tried, but we've got to help you maybe try some different ways. Does that make sense? So that, so that things can actually change rather than there being no change. Because as you know, on the earth at the moment, there's a lot of people who are getting harmed. Oh, so many. Yeah. So many. I'm so angry. Yeah. It's not right. No. It's not right no it's not but the way you've been trying to help them doesn't actually help them either and and i'll explain why once we have a bit more of a conversation 
the first thing I'd like to do is introduce you to these people who, who would like to assist if that's okay. Because if it does turn out that we lose our chance to communicate with each other, then, um, then you'll still be able to talk to these particular people who can help you. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Well, I'll ask uh, the ones who want to help you come to you. There's a man, I, I don't have this proper pronunciation of his name, but Amantu is one of the men, but there's also some others. Mm. Now, the f first thing I'd like you to try to feel is to feel what you feel from them. Do you feel that they want to hurt you? No. Where were they? Where were they? Why? Well, they've always been around you. Many of them have been living in the spirit world longer than you have, so you would never have met them anyway. Um, and many of them have had to make similar changes to what you need to make in the future to be happy and that took them a long time to do that and so that's why it's taken time for them to to be there but also there's another reason and that is that they have been around you at different times but but you've been unable to see them or to accept their help so but where were men like this when I was on earth well yeah there's very few men who lived in your time on earth, who, who are actually kind towards women. Yes. Very few. These men remind me of the warriors my mother told me about. Yeah. The warriors. She came. She came from our home. And she told me stories. Mm -hmm. Of men who were strong. Mm -hmm. And proud. Mm. But also men who, who loved women as well, hey? who cared for women rather than wanted to hurt them. And protected them. Yes, although I don't know if the protection sometimes was good either, you know. Some of the, some of the protection ended up being violent and violence is never a good outcome. Yeah. <laughs> these men who are with you now that you can see they don't want to be violent to protect you. They've got other ways that are much stronger that can help you and help you work through these particular issues. Does that make sense? Yes. They seem good. Yeah. They seem good and they seem like ho holy. Yeah, they are. They've, they've, they've had to work through a lot of their issues of wanting to have vengeance and they were angry and are angry about the injustices and sometimes they even cause some injustices in their past and they want to fix all of that. It's very hard to be around men. No, I understand that you feel that way. Um, but as you can see, not all men are bad. <sighs> how, many, how many people are with you? Constance? I don't, oh. Many, 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 thousands and thousands. Mm -hmm. And you notice that all of them have sort of experienced similar things to you. Yes. And can you see that some of them are men too? Yes. You haven't noticed that before? Have no. You? No. So some men have also been victims of this kind of abuse and slavery. And in fact, during the time period that you're talking about that you lived, many men experienced as much of the, were as much victims of slavery as the women were. They kept us apart. That's right. They kept us apart. Do you know why they did that? No. I... I it was only my, I don't know. The way that many abusers on earth perpetrate their abuse is by separating the people who could oppose the abuse. So what they do, what they did in the past with slaves is that they separated the men from the women. So the men had nothing to fight for sort of thing. 
and the women had nothing to hope for and the men had nothing to hope for and that's it how worked. and that's how they continued abusing people for a long period of time and it's a general it's a general way that a lot of people on earth abuse people now if you you can observe that happening if you think about your experience of what you've observed you can see that a lot of the time abusive people always try to separate people from one another in order to be able to abuse them individually yes mm. yes they do mm. we we be with them yes i understand that's why you've been with them so they at least have somebody with them yeah so yeah so you've met those people now so you know who i'm talking about these ones have been with you now so you, if you can see all the men and women who are with you who are similar to you there's lots and lots of those isn't there yes millions, i didn't see millions in fact yes i didn't see them mm. yeah and you're all together because you have similar feelings does that make sense see what happens is when you have similar feelings to another person it often creates a automatic attraction to that person Mm -hmm. So many of the women and the men that are with you, they all have similar feelings. They all are angry about the abuse that they've had to endure while they're on earth. They were, oftentimes they were slaves or in slavery, whether that was in slavery to a, a man or in slavery to a system. And, and all of them have very, very similar emotions to you as well. I, uh, I don't like it. Uh, I'm having many memories now mm -hmm. that's okay we'll talk to you about how to handle the memories in a minute is that all right yeah yeah so what i what i'm wanting to make sure of though is that um, what we're going to do now is ask for some additional spirits who are women spirits who have been through the same kind of thing you have been through to come as well Yes. And what we're going to do just for a moment, there's no need to be afraid of this, but what I need to do is show you the brightness of these people. Normally when they come to the earth plane or to the, to the area around the earth, what they would normally do is their colour would change and it would become similar to your colours. In other words, it would look sort of grey, they sort of look grey. But what I'm going to do is just ask them to be their normal selves just for a moment so that you can observe what they look like. It's like a brilliance in the night. Yeah. Yeah. Never saw such a thing. No. And that's the kind of, that's a reflection of the love they have. Does that make sense? Because in the spirit world, love is power. And one of the reasons why you as a group are not experiencing much power is because you're now have it, you've now got inside of you so much anger about what's happened to you that, that the anger causes you to not love. Does that make sense? Yes. But these people have had a similar kind of anger when they were first arrived in the spirit world. And they can just show you pictures of that now. I never saw anything so beautiful. Mm. We're going to ask them to show you pictures now of how they first arrived in the spirit world. And what oh. they look like then. They'd be like me. They'd be like you, yes. So that should show you that you're able to get from where you are now to a place where they are now. Make sense? And they're just normal person, people like you've been. They've had a lot of oppression like you've had. Make sense? So my first reason for talking to you has been just to introduce you to them. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yes. Yep. Now, you've probably not experienced anything like this before, right? So, where yeah. you've, where you, you've not even seen the people who are with you. You've not, none of you have really seen each other, have you? No. It's almost like you've been together in a group, but you've all been blind to each other, almost. Yes. And all you've been doing is focusing your attention to people on Earth who are being hurt and abused. Yes. But that you haven't noticed who was around you, or where you were, even. Makes sense, do you? Yes. And that's what happens when we become so focused on, you know, with our anger and our vengeance and our feelings like that, is that we become so focused, it's like a tunnel, and we, we finish up only seeing the thing we want to see. Can, can I find my daughter? Well, yes, a, a, a lot's going to depend on the condition of love that you have as to who you'll be able to find. And a lot, of, a lot will depend on her condition of love as well. Now, if her condition of love exceeds yours, in other words, she has got over her vengeance and her other angry emotions, then she'd be able to find you easy enough now. And so what we're going to do is find out whether she has done that. And if she has done that, we'll bring it to you. The Mantu will tell you whether that's possible. Oh. Hmm. My girl. Hmm. It says, how is she now? She looks good. Hmm. Does she look a bit, if she displays her brightness to you, how does that look? Good. Mm -hmm. How does it compare with the other people who are trying to help you? Not so bright. Mm. So she's made some progress, but she can't help you as much as these other people can help you. That makes sense? I never thought I'd see her again. Mm. Well, everybody who passes goes to the spirit world, so everybody who's ever passed that you knew would you'd be able to find in the spirit world somewhere. A lot of times it's hard to find them because you were not even thinking about them because we're so focused on what's going on on the earth still, you see. You think about how often you've thought about your daughter after she passed. I thought of her so much. Yeah. On earth. That's right, you did. I was with her every day. I could talk to her. Yes. And then when you passed, who passed first? Me. You passed. And you... Then, I, then, then I was with her. Yes, When you. she be on earth. You talked to her. Yes. And like I talk to you now. And, yes, and she heard you. Yes. Yeah. But yeah. then, and gone. And then what happened? Gone. She went, she went. how did she go? So that, that's all stuff you don't know yet, isn't it? No. Well, she can explain to you what happened. Oh. So what happened? So much better for her. All the... All the ancestors mm -hmm. came to meet her. When she passed? Yep. Why, why not me? Because you were so focused on vengeance. Does that make sense? And you're so focused with yeah. your anger, you wouldn't be able to see the ancestors who came. They tried to come, but you can't see them. You see, but you remember I said just earlier, when you're so angry and you're so intent on your anger, you just focus. It's like a tunnel vision. You know, you only see the things that make you angry. You see nothing else. That makes sense. They took so much from me. They did. Of course I was angry. Yeah, I'm not saying that there was any reason, you know, that of course you were going to be angry because of the injustice that you've experienced. But there's a difference between... They took her, they took her. They took my girl. They did, yeah. And that's a part of the injustice you experienced. Yeah. 
the general the general actions of an abuser are that they don't want to see joy in any person that they're abusing and your relationship with your daughter brought you joy and they took her and so they took her mm. i didn't see her she i didn't see her yeah. for years yeah yeah i didn't know what where she happened. was yeah yeah but and it grew my anger it grew my anger well it grew your sadness and your anger is a result of the suppression of your sadness and it's very important that you understand the difference my anger kept me alive well you think that it kept you alive but in some ways it might have been better if you died earlier mightn't it Because after you've passed, you're not, you can't experience the same level of physical violence that you experienced while you're on Earth. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't. You know. didn't know that, though, did you? At the time, and you thought that living on Earth was the only thing that was available to you. Yeah. You didn't think much about an afterlife. No. No. And so you became very tunnel vision. And this is like all of you in this group, you're very tunnel visioned still. Yeah. still. I just built a rock inside That's right. and it kept me going, kept me slaving and it kept me, I was going to find her mm. and I was going to kill him. I planned to kill him every day, Yeah. every day in a hundred ways I planned how I could kill him. Yeah. Yeah. And that level of anger keeps you like focused just on one thing and you can't see anything else. Yeah. Makes sense. And because you can't see anything else, even if people come to help you after you've passed, they can't help you because you can't see them and you can't hear them. It's like if someone on earth tried to help you and tell you that it was like not right to have this level of vengeance about your daughter, you wouldn't have listened to them, would you? No. And it's the same thing, except these are people that you can't see unless you want to see them. And so this is why your ancestors couldn't come to you. They tried coming to you, but they couldn't. You couldn't see them, you see, you couldn't hear them. You wouldn't listen to them anyway. I don't know how to stop having that, the rock. Well, that's what I'd like to talk to you about. That, and this is what our spirit friends who I've just introduced to you want to help you with. Does that make sense? Because you've got to stop having the tunnel vision, you see. Because if you keep having this tunnel vision, focusing all of your life on just your anger, then you're not going to enjoy anything else the rest of your life until you change. And so what I'd like to do is show you how you can change it. That makes sense. I feel I won't ex exist. I won't live without my anger. Well, that, that's only a feeling and it's a fear based feeling and it's OK to have it. It's not true, though. God made your soul to exist under all circumstances. So the reality is that you will continue to exist once your anger is gone. And if you, you can see with the people who, who have come to help you, can you see with them that they ha used to have the kind of anger you have, right? Yes. And, and now what's going on? They don't. They don't have it anymore, do they? No. No. So, so they obviously got rid of their anger somehow. Yes. And they still exist. Yes. Now, the next thing I'd like to do is show you, though, just where they exist. And what they're going to do is show you pictures of where they exist.
Is it Africa? It's like a paradise. Yeah, it's My mother like... told me Africa was a paradise. <laughs> Well, at one time, Africa was a paradise. I don't think you could say that it is now. No. <laughs> um, but Injustice. Yeah, because of the injustice and the way that Western nations rape and pillage the countryside of, of Africa. But in the past, it was very pretty, wasn't it? Um, but you only I, know that from, I've never been. Yeah, you only know that from what you've been told. But these particular places that these particular spirits live in are not on earth at all. They're in other locations in the spirit world. Because remember, you're a spirit now. You're not, you're, your physical body has died. Yeah. All right. You know this because when you try to talk to people on earth, they can't really hear you. You can influence them yeah. by your feelings, but they can't really hear you very well. Yeah. And also when you try to, you know, push them into doing something with your hands, you push right through them. So yeah. you know that you no longer have a physical body, right? So yeah. your physical body is gone and the physical body is the only thing that really can to experience things on earth. Your spirit body can experience things in spirit world and on earth, but, but in a different way on earth. But there are spirit locations which are like similar to the earth, but are, but are, are far prettier and more beautiful and that spirits can live on. Mm. Uh, I'd like to go. Yeah, you've never seen one of those places, have you? No. In your whole life that you've been past. And the reason why is because uh, no one's being able to show you those places. That makes sense. But also it depends upon the condition of your of love in you that depends upon the location. So what I'm going to do is ask our spirit friends now to show you the location of where they first arrived in the spirit world. And you compare that with the location where they are now. Oh. It's very different, isn't it? So their first location was because of their condition of love and because they had a lot of anger that they had to get rid of and a lot of vengeance feelings they had to get rid of and so forth. They had to work through, you know, somehow. And I, we can talk about how in a second. But once they worked through that, then their locations changed. Does mm. that make sense? And, and what about the white man? The white man who did the harm no, does he get to be there too? Well, there's a, there's a white man in your group, isn't there? Because there's some white men that have also been harmed. Yes, but they be slaves too. They be slaves too, yeah. But uh, there's some white men also in the group that's trying to help you, isn't there? Hmm. I didn't see them. No, no. That's understandable given the fact that you feel all white men are going to harm you. But the white men that harmed you, well, they have to go through a process where they have to get rid of why they wanted to harm you. Blankies. We call them blankies. Blankies. Why do you call them blankies? They're blank. No soul, no nothing. Uh -huh. Just... Blank. No colour. Mm -hmm. mm. When you, um, the reality is, I could take take you to where some of them still are in the spirit world, because they're. Uh, yeah. But the problem with doing that is that you're more than likely going to want to harm them. <laughs> yes. Because of the rage, which would make your situation worse. Does that make sense? So I never allowed, I never allowed to have anger with them? No, you're allowed to have your anger. You're allowed to do anything you want. What I'm saying is your anger will keep you in a condition of a lack of love and that will stop you from being happy. So what? So there's a better way of dealing with the problem. In the future, you'll be able to see where these people went that harmed you. And where they went was in a much worse place than where you are now. 
Do you understand? Yeah. And it's what you would expect almost, isn't it? Given the fact yes. that their condition of love must have been pretty bad. I hope they're chained in the darkest, dirtiest, filthy well, region. Well, many of them are, but not because of your hope. Who put them? Well, God's laws put them there. Their condition of love is what put them there. Their lack of love in them is what put them there. And these things can be explained to you in time. I don't be on good terms with God. <laughs> well, you're sort of blaming God for what man has done, but we'll talk about that too. Man gave my daughter God, didn't help her. Well, no, God's helped her all the way along. If you ask her, you'll see that God's been trying to help her just like God's been trying to help you. These people who are here trying to help you like a man to, uh, they wouldn't be here helping you if it wasn't for the help they've already got from God. Can it be a different God? Well, when you say... No different... white man can tell me about God. No white man who does these things can be, can, can, I don't... <sighs> well, the God, the God of the white man who harmed you, you know, he obviously didn't believe in God at all, really. He was a devil. Yeah, that's right. He made up, he made up a God to be a devil, didn't he? Yes. That's not God really, though, is it? So you've got to be careful that you're not, believing things about God that have just been established by the white man's treatment of you. I don't know God then. That's right, you don't. And it's okay. But you can get to know God. This is one of the things that our friends would like to help you do. But God's a lot different than what the white man taught you he was. You follow? Okay. Remember that your anger always makes your viewpoint small. Mm. And to find out the truth about things, you've got to have a bigger viewpoint. And to have a bigger viewpoint, we've got to help you with your anger. Mm. Now, the things that have been done to you are terrible and should never have been done. No. And you would agree with that, right? Yes. And you didn't deserve them? No, I did not. No. It's good that you can see that you didn't deserve them because many of the other people feel they did deserve them and they still didn't deserve it. Do you know what I mean? There's people who have been harmed who feel they deserve the harm, but that's not true either. My mother taught me. That you didn't deserve it. We had that very... we were different people. Yep. It's good that your mother taught you that. I tried to teach my girl, but she was gone. Mm -hmm. mm. So soon. Mm. So angry. Yeah. Now I need to help explain just so that you, you can see that these spirits who we brought to help you have the ability to help you and they've been through what you've been through right they have the ability to help you but there's one thing that i really probably need to help you with first before they can help you and that is how do you get rid of anger yes i don't know any life without anger i know i know you don't i don't know any anything but anger one of the things you've been doing is you've been you've been trying to embroil other people in your anger it's good you think it feels good it does because it gets them agreeing with you yes but it doesn't help you with your anger your anger will never end if you keep doing that And there's a reason but, why that's the case. 
when they agree with my anger, mm -hmm. what happens? I know they know it's wrong. Yep. But what be done to me? What it was wrong. They know it then when yeah, they're angry. They do, yeah. But and if they don't anymore yeah. be angry, then I'm alone. Nobody sees. Yeah, can you see what's driving you to share your anger with others? It's because you don't want to feel some sadness that you have inside of yourself, right? It's wrong. The world is wrong. I agree, but the world is wrong because of what men and women have chosen to do. That's why it's wrong. And in some ways, some of the things you're currently doing are helping it stay wrong. They must know it's wrong. I tell them. Yeah. But I make it, them know it's wrong. But it's not a, that's not the only thing you've been doing, though, as you know. You've also been trying to get back at the people who caused the wrong. Yeah. So, kill them. Kill them. Yeah. You're trying to get the people who know it's wrong to be angry and violent with the people who are wrong. That's what you've trying, been trying to do. I planned it. I planned it so many times. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I couldn't do it. Yeah. Well, sometimes the people on earth you were influencing did it for you. Yes. One less. One less. One less blankie to hurt other people. Abuser, yeah. But this is the trouble, you see. Now the person who did that violence has become the same as the person who did violence to them. Not the same. Yeah. No. From God's perspective. Same. But when, when they take and when they take and when they take and they take, mm -hmm. and finally you take back, it's not the same. Well, it's not quite the same, but it's pretty much the same. You're still taking a life. And in the end, isn't it the main problem that everybody is willing to engage violence in order to get what they want. Then where is justice? Well, justice only comes about from love. A loving course of action is justice. Uh, and you're also not seeing that just, God's already got justice underway. And you, you can't see it on earth very easily, but if you could see what was happening in the spirit world better, you'd see the justice you'd see that all the people who have been abusers are all in a terrible place, much worse place than you'll ever be. Okay. And that forms a part of the justice. But you don't know that yet because you're not seeing that yet because you're so focused on your justice. And in, the, in a way, no matter how much justice you've been focused on, you've never got justice for yourself because what's happened to you has already happened to you and there's no way you can change it. Can you see that? So how, yeah. how are you going to get justice for yourself? Because the way you're doing it is not going to give you justice for yourself. It only gives you justice perhaps for another. Yeah. But not for yourself. How do you get justice for yourself? I don't know. Can you see the problem? And by encouraging people to do things to other people, that doesn't give you justice for yourself. My girl. My girl, be here. Mm. Help me. Well, don't forget that your girl is not in as condition of love as the other people I'm trying to introduce you to. And so therefore they can help you more than your girl can. So while it's wonderful that you've met up with your daughter again, 
both you and her can be helped by these other ones who have introduced you to. You can be much happier than you are now. But I haven't forgotten the discussion about that we've been discussing, and that is the discussion about, remember, the discussion about what's anger. under your anger. anger, what drives your anger. All I know is anger. Mm. Well, at a very young age, you learnt to not cry, right? Yeah. Why? What happened when you cried? Everyone hurt me. Yeah. My mother, she scolded me. Yeah. And the blanky women and blanky men, they hit me. Mm -hmm. Every time you cried. And I stopped. That's right. And that's what created your anger. Before then, you weren't so angry. Can you remember? You just felt like crying. So long ago. Yeah. So what happened was that people around you stopped you from crying. By being violent with you. And even your mo own kin did that, right? Yeah. To be strong. Yeah, but the problem is that it creates anger. To, to not create anger, you need to cry. So the way you get through why you're so angry is you start connecting to what you need to cry about. And you let yourself cry. It makes sense to you. And this is the way to get happier. It sounds funny, but the way to get happier and to not be so angry is to actually let yourself cry. I don't know if I remember. How to cry? Yeah. Yeah, I think you will remember how to cry. God made us with tear ducts and <laughs> God made us to be able to cry. He knew that other people may treat you badly, not because of what he wanted them to do, but because of their own desires. And he knew you might have to cry about some of the treatment. Can you see that that's what your daughter's had to do? She's had to cry about things? Yeah. Yeah. And can you see with the other people that we brought to help you? They've had to cry about things too? So the secret is basically reconnecting with crying, learning how to cry again. And nobody hurt me here if I cry? That's right. Nobody's going to punish you for crying. That's the difference. See, in your earth life, everybody punished you. Even your own family punished you for crying. But that doesn't happen in the spirit world. Everybody in the spirit world who starts to progress knows that you need to cry in order to make some progress. That makes sense? Yes. And you need to cry in order to let go of anger and fear. Yes. And what I've said applies not only to you, but to every single person who is there with you that you haven't seen. They all need to have good cries about what's happened to them. They'd be shocked. Everybody be shocked right now. Mm-hmm. They never talked to anyone. No, they never even knew that any of the rest of you were there with them, right? Because remember, every one of you was just like, you had a very, like, closed vision. All you were focused on is the one thing you saw, the violence perpetrated towards another, unfairly, in your mind. And that's all you see, right? You see nothing else. You haven't even seen who you're with. You haven't even seen who's surrounding you. You haven't seen anybody that can help you. No. You haven't seen what the spirit world's like yet. No. And you've been, you've been a spirit body for 300 years or more, and you still haven't seen what the spirit world is like yet.
I feel different. Mm -hmm. That's good. But you'll need to let go of your anger, and the way you let go of your anger is to have some good cries. And you need to let yourself have some cries, and the people around you need to stop. You know, they, they will try to help you have your good cries. And, uh, and hopefully, you know, you won't be with people anymore that are going to punish you for crying. So that'd be fantastic, wouldn't it? To be able to let go of that grief that you have that's there, really. It's a, it's a, it's a case of softening to your grief, you know what I mean? You know how you said you're real hard and you're real like a stone? You've learnt to be firm like a stone? Yes. And now you've just got to soften up a bit now. You don't need to be firm like a stone anymore. That was what it was like on Earth, but you don't, you're not there anymore. You're not on Earth anymore. You don't have to be that way anymore. I don't know how, but I'll try. Mm -hmm. Well, this is what I'm saying is our spirit friends that are with you will help you show you how. And the key is to listen to them carefully. Instead of arguing for your own vengeance, if you listen to them carefully, they'll be able to show you how you can get through that emotion and how you can be of more help to the people on earth who are being harmed. Do you follow? What happens on Earth, I just need to explain to you what happens, is that when a group of people get harmed on Earth, often that group of people who have been harmed now want to harm others. Right? Because they have feelings of vengeance like you've had. Mm. So then they, they engage the feelings of vengeance and they harm others. Now often, unfortunately, they don't harm the very people who harm them. And they end They'll up, be gone. They'll, they'll be, be gone. gone, that's right. And so they end up harming another group of people who didn't deserve it. But they be bad. They be bad. You don't know that. Oftentimes they're not bad. There's just a supposition that there's bad. And then what happens is you end up in the cycle of violence where every new generation of that type of person harms the next generation of that type of person. And so if you're black and you're white, you have whites harming blacks and then blacks harming whites and then whites harming blacks and then blacks harming whites and so forth and so forth and so forth and it just keeps going. And every new generation believes that they've been harmed. And every new generation believes that they've been treated unjustly. And so it's not the way forward, you know, it's not the way to happiness on the earth. Maybe I'll learn this. Well, it's difficult to see it now, but as you let go of your tears and you let yourself cry and you listen to the different guidance that you get from these other spirit friends who are obviously happier, who can help you be happier, then you'll start to see what's going on. That makes sense. Yes. Hmm. So as a group, now that you can see all the others, I know all of them are fairly speechless at this stage, that are shocked that uh, yes. they've never really noticed that you're all together as a group. But can I just ask you as a group to listen to those spirit friends that I've introduced you to, instead of being really short-sighted and closed with your vision so that you only see the one thing that you see, the injustice, and see nothing else. They'd be listening, they'd be listening. For you, seeing only the injustice caused you to not even see your daughter. No. So, for all of you, whenever you only see injustice and you see nothing else, then, and, and it's good to see injustice, people need to know things are unjust, there's not a problem with that. But when it's the only thing you see, and vengeance is the only thing on your mind, you won't see anything else and you won't enjoy anything else and you won't be happy. Mm. So you need to let yourself see more than what you've been seeing. Mm. Make sense? Yes. All right, well, I'm going to leave you in their capable hands for a while. 
But I just want to talk to one of them, Mamantu, who uh, asked for our help to try and connect you to them. Okay, I'll be you, going. You, I'll you, be see, going. you see him? You see him, Mamantu? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice to talk to you, Constance. Mm. And it's a lovely name, Constance. Thank you. And, uh, and if you can listen really carefully to the people who want to help you, then you'll be in a much happier place than what you've been in for many hundreds of years. Okay. Mm. Good day. Remember, if you need any more help or you want to talk any more, you can come again and talk to us. Okay. Okay. Mm. I'll be going. No worries. Oh, brother, mm-hmm. we thank you. Mm-hmm. There is much joy here. That's one of the groups. I don't know how many more there are. There must, must be a lot more. But. A great deal, many. Mm. And if you are open, we would bring many to you in the coming weeks. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, we can do that every time we have some discussions with you. With this, our spirit friends, we can at least do a group one at a time. What joy! What mm. joy! Mm. We thank you. Mm. So there's a good chance that they'll have a good listen to you at least. Yes, mm. already. Yeah, yeah. Already, we we needed a way to capture their attention, and you did that for yeah. us. Yeah. Um, I just want to ask some details for the sake of our listeners. Yes. Um. You'll notice in the discussion with Constance that, you know, they couldn't see each other. Um, can you sort of explain what that looks like for our listeners' sake? When they're in this process where they can't see each other? Mm, even though they're together as a group. They, as you mentioned, I think, to Constance, they are enthralled in their own emotion and their very togetherness builds the emotion amongst them, but Mm. they have a single focus upon the earth and the emotion drives them rather than any intellect or any self-awareness. And we noticed the struggle of Constance to become self-aware. It is as if it appears to us as if the emotion has hijacked the soul and that is all that is cycling Mm. and all reasoning and intellect and for want of a better word self-awareness has receded from the personality so you could say the emotion creates a group consciousness yes where, where the group is only conscious of one emotion and that's the only thing that drives them. And when one of them tries to get out of the group, the rest of the group pull them back into the group by being, because of the sympathetic emotion. Yes. And it's just a constant cycle then. Even when some try to escape the group, they pull back into the group through the same emotion. Exactly in this mm. way, yes. Mm. And it is very common in groups. On Earth. On Earth, exactly. in all groups that we observe. <laughs> it's just that for these particular individuals, the avoidance of the suffering and the hardship and even avoidance of the awareness of the particular things that happened Mm. to each of them while they were on earth Mm. causes them to be completely enthralled in the fear anger violence cycle Mm. and uh, they even are, are unaware that they are in a group. Mm. Obviously, in other groups, we see that the collective emotional condition creates uh, not only the attraction, but the resistance to one who is wishing to move outside of it. Mm. But in this case, there is almost no uh, reasoning or intellect involved apart from this uh, violent emotional cycle which is focused on the earth because that's what they can observe more easily yes than each other and the the false beliefs driving this cycle that they will prevent future harm future harm and they will protect or 
assist the people mm. in a way that they believe that they had not been protected or assisted. Yes. Yeah. Not being aware that it just creates a cycle of violence. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And how many were actually in the group, Lamante? Millions, two million. Mm. Yeah. We are unsure at this stage if all of them will be assisted, but there are many workers now commencing. Yeah, and the beauty of it, when you can, when you can help the group become conscious, yes. now the individuals are able to escape the group and, the group, and the group themselves are less resistive to that occurring. Yeah. Yes, to make more of a personal choice. That's right, mm -hmm. yeah. So this is why we need to, if we do it in the future, we need to talk to the groups rather than the individuals. Yes, mm. yes. Mm. And to assist these groups who, who are in a group mentality, yeah. a group emotional condition, yeah. this will have a large impact. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, does anyone, has anyone had a look and see how many of these groups there are relating to this particular problem? There is at least five, of, five or six others in this general vicinity yeah. <laughs> without yeah. us surveying any further. Yeah. yeah. So many brothers and sisters who, have, who are caught in a cycle of avoidance of pain. Yes. And uh, in some countries, it's even worse. You know, yes. Like when myself and and Mary have travelled to Barbados, you notice there that it's like there's a, no, a, lot, a large number of groups like this. Mm. Um, obviously, through, because of the history in the Caribbean mm -hmm. of slavery and violence. Yes. Mm. Uh, in fact, her Constance was from this region. Mm. 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 Yeah. The Indies. The Indies, terrible Much place, suffering, suffering Much through suffering. the from the sixteenth century to the nineteenth. Yes. Mm. Yes. Mm. Thank you again, okay, friend. Yeah, no, that's good. That's good, Amante. We at least uh, help some of our brothers and sisters who are stuck. Not a small, not a small service or gift. Mm. We thank you again. Mm. It's a pleasure. How you doing, Dal? Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> She's pretty angry, hey? Pretty angry. And I get I get um get a picture of her life and it's very sad. Mm. Very sad. Yeah. Yeah, she doesn't feel sad about it yet, but I do. No. <laughs> she needs to let herself feel sad about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and also her daughter's life was sad too. Mm. But it's it's sad that millions of people have experienced the same level of violence and abuse, and millions of people today are experiencing the same level of violence and abuse. The same things. Yeah. Yeah, and of course those people... Uh, the thing that happened that I felt when I was speaking with Constance was that so her mother was originally from Africa and brought to somewhere in the you know like in the Caribbean or the or the north of South America or something well, in the Indies in, probably yeah, yeah, in the, the Indies Caribbean, I think yeah. um, and she was there and had Constance and then Constance was raped and had her daughter. Um, and then she was killed. She was so angry, so angry, because her mother had encouraged that in her, really, mm -hmm. um, because her daughter was taken from her when she was just very, very small. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, Constance passed, and it felt like initially Constance Yes, she was angry, but she was sort of having some, like, yeah. love for her daughter. Yeah, some connection with her daughter still, yeah. Up until the point where her daughter was then <laughs> raped mm. and then she just entered this state that she's in now. Just, just of rage, yeah. Of rage and unreasoning and, um, and she, her influence on her daughter ceased. Yeah. But 
but maybe that's why her daughter did better because she had less less influence, uh, influence. family based influence yeah right. mm. and also had sort of a a loving presence or a a presence around her even if it was just in spirit who was wanting to care for her whereas Constance didn't have that you know. yeah yeah yeah. And by that time, Constance was in a group of people who were pretty vengeful anyway. Mm. And yeah. it's highly unlikely. Well, that every help that was attempted to give to her, she wouldn't receive anyway. With Constance, mm. you mean? Or do we have? Mm. Yeah. 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 And that's a pretty common thing. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we hopefully help a few more of those groups over the coming weeks when yeah. every time we do some channeling and yeah. we may not record them all but we'll at least be able to help them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. All right everyone, I, I I don't know whether you could call enjoyment or <laughs> something like that. It's you know, obviously there's a lot of people on earth who who are continually getting harmed by others, who are being abused by others and are being um who feel quite angry and resentful and then feel like engaging some kind of vengeful uh, outcome upon the people that have harmed them. But you can see from our discussion with Constance that, you know, that doesn't help a person in the long run. And uh, hopefully the thing that we can learn from it is this, is this principle of wanting to forgive rather than continuing in a state of not forgiving. Wanting forgive, remember, forgiveness is for yourself too, in the sense that it, what it does is it relieves you of your rage. Mm. And, but it requires connecting to your own sadness about what's happened to you. And to do that, you've got to see what happened to you. And in Constance's case, she can see what's happened to her, but her heart's been like a stone and never wanting to feel about it. And very important to soften that up and to become softer so that you do feel about the harm mm. that's been perpetrated towards you, that is actual harm. Yeah. It's many times we believe that we've been harmed when we haven't been. We haven't but, been, yeah. But, uh, but in Constance's case, she had been harmed mm. terribly, and many people on the planet do get harmed terribly by others. And, uh, and there's a need to feel the softness to the sadness about it. Yeah. Mm. And what I noticed with Constance, um, I mean, she had a terrible death as well, and uh, as well as the terrible life. Mm. Uh, but what I noticed when you began speaking with her, she had disconnected really from the exact memories of it. Mm. And it, I could feel these surges of emotion in her when you, it, even just remembering her daughter was very intense for her because mm. Mm. she'd, and I think a lot of us do that on earth where we get caught up in the avoidance emotion, uh, the avoidance of the actual thing that's happened to us. Of the grief-based emotion. The grief-based emotion. Mm. And we almost detune from... What's happened. What's happened. Yeah. yeah. And that's how people can actually live in states for long periods of time where they can't even hardly remember what happened to them. Yeah. Until they start connecting, reconnecting again to their grief about it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So hopefully our listeners have learned some lessons from that. That's, yeah. a, that's a good lesson to learn when it comes to our own emotional processing work. Yes. Mm. Yeah. So I'd like to thank you for your time today, everyone, and uh, and we may do a bit more channeling today. Yet we'll have a bit of a break now, and and uh, but that's the end of our discussion with Amantu and also with Constance. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully you can see from our, from the helpers side of things that Amantu wanted to help some spirits, some people but they couldn't be helped and and this often happens on earth too where mm. it'd be nice to be able to help groups of people you know many people who are enslaved by religious ideals for example but because they're in this certain mindset and a, and they have only a you know their their focus is only on that one thing it's very very difficult to help them until they can open their mind up and also open up a bit more emotionally to assist them so you can see that in order to help somebody, there first needs to be a point of contact and, and some kind of opening in, in the person where they see that there is a reason for, for why the discussion is actually happening. Yeah. And there's a reason as to why they feel the way they feel and so forth. Mm. And then you can begin to actually assist them. Mm. So, so hopefully uh, 
we can assist a few more of them. <laughs> so we'd like to thank you for your time and thank Mary for her channeling today. Thanks. Thank you, Donald. <laughs>